on your screen are several symbols we'll be using in this presentation. Using a digital voltmeter correctly, the first thing to focus on is voltage readings. You always need a reference point. In our examples, and for just about everything we do in irrigation control, for voltage readings, we need an earth ground reference point. That's this little symbol. Put your meter on it, you should have zero volts AC. Meters read the difference in potential when they read voltage. So to understand the readings, I have a couple examples. In this first example, reading from ground to ground with a voltmeter, we're going to get a reading of zero volts AC. In the second example, if we read from the hot on a wall outlet to ground, we're going to get 120 volt AC. That's because we have 120 on the hot, zero on the ground. The difference in potential between them, or the difference between them is 120 volts. In this next example, we're measuring the hot to the hot. That's giving us 120 volts and 120 volts. So there's zero difference in potential. And then this last example from 120 volts, the hot, to the common, which would be 10 volts, we're going to have a 110 volt reading, or that's the difference between 120 and 10. So by understanding those readings, you're going to have a better understanding of what we're looking for and what kind of things we're going to find as we troubleshoot an irrigation system. You also need to remember we have to have a reference point and our reference point is earth ground and earth ground is zero volts. Very important and as stated before just as a reminder meters read the difference in potential. So if we have a controller so if we have a controller and we want to read uh, the power readings from hot to ground looking at our little diagram we have the hot wire black we have the ground wire green the neutral wire in the middle is gold and then our earth grounds are at our power source we also have a personal ground which is at the controller nothing more than a ground rod let's take the first lead and put it into the ground let's take the second lead and put it on to in this case the hot because we're reading the hot to ground reading we should be in a range of 108 to 120 volts AC for the controller to be working correctly so looking at that a little bit more that 120 volt reading that we had again acceptable is 108 to 128 perfectly good reading at 120 volts if we don't have that reading some of the causes of an improper reading if we get no voltage, let's go look and see if the power's turned off. Or it could be that we have a broken hot wire, or we have a bad hot wire splice. If we have a low voltage reading, something below 108 volts, it may be that the hot wire has a nick in the outer jacket, or we have a bad hot splice somewhere in the power wire. Now let's check a reading from neutral to ground. Put our voltmeter first stick into the earth, second stick onto the neutral wire, and here's a, let's just use this as an example, we got a 1.3 volt AC reading, well 0 to 5 volts is considered an acceptable reading, anything above 5 volts is a problem. Let's drill into that a little bit more, 0 to 5 volts is an acceptable reading causes of an improper reading if we had a full voltage reading something around 120 volts we might have a broken common wire and the common wire the neutral wire it could be broken we could be uh, somehow pulling wire from the 120 volt hot wire okay a breaks going to do that if it's done the right, broken in the right way and a bad communications or a bad common causes of improper readings are for full voltage reading 
we might have a broken common wire where it's inducing voltage into the hot wire, or we might have a bad common wire splice. If we have a low voltage reading, okay, it could be a nick in the wire, or it could be a bad splice. So those are the things that we're looking for if when we read the neutral to ground, we have something more than five volts. Next test is hot to neutral. Test it under load, so I'll have the controller running. First lead we're going to put to the neutral wire. Second lead we'll put to the hot wire. Now we get a reading of, in this example, 118.7 volts. Acceptable readings here between 108 and 128. Now, using the examples we've got so far, uh, notice that we had 120 volts, then from neutral to ground had 1.3 volts. The difference in potential is 118.7. So it all makes sense. We did three readings. You can see the three readings and how they all intertwine. Remember, these same rules not only apply to single control systems, but they also apply to multiple controller systems. Let's do a quick field simulation. Here's our problem. No field controllers are working. In this example, we've got five controllers. So we're going to take some readings, the same readings that we just took. Hot to earth ground, zero volts. So we, we know we've got that reading. Neutral to earth ground, zero volts. Well, right now, uh, we'd come up with a probable conclusion that we have no power coming out of our power source. Logically, we'd go to the power source and see if we have power into it, if it's a breaker turned off, a fuser's blown, or just what's going on at the power source. So that was example one. Here's example two. Out of the five controllers, two are not working. So first, let's take our readings hot to earth ground. We're going to do this at the first controller that's not working from our power source. Here we have zero volts. Let's take a second reading, neutral to earth ground. And here we have zero volts. Well, from what we've learned so far, there's got to be a break. Where does the break have to be? We can deduce that it's a hot wire break, and it has to be right before or between the first controller that's not working and the last controller that is working. Example three, two field controllers are not working, but it's a different two in this example. It's controllers four and five. We do the same tests, hot to earth ground, find that we have 120 volts AC at the first controller that's not working. Second reading, neutral to earth ground, and we find that there also we have 120 volts AC. So again, neutral to earth ground, we should have a reading of 0 to 5 volts, nothing more. So from what we've already learned, we already know we have a break in the neutral wire. Hot to neutral reading though, we get a zero reading. So probable conclusion is we have a neutral wire break. Now, where does the break have to be? Well, we know it has to be between the last controllers that are working and the first controller that isn't working. 